and it's great to be with you. I want to thank once again Dr. Arthur Frost for the opportunity uh, to minister to you today. I'm busy with a series on rejection. I believe God wants to break that spirit of rejection that's controlling many of our lives so much. Before we spoke about hearing the voice of God and how uh, it affects our rejection, affects our hearing. And then oh, we also spoke about how how uh, people are afraid to be rejected, and um, which is a spirit of fear that's trying to uh, uh, make people feel rejected. And today I also I want to speak to you a little bit about vision because I also believe that that uh, people um, that suffer from rejection um, it affects their vision, it affects their how they see things and what their eyes see. And so uh, I want you to get ready once again in our comment section and all of that. Just write down some notes, get, write down the scriptures that I say with anything that stood out to you. But speak to me where you're watching from. Always nice to see where everybody's from in South Africa. But uh, it's going to be good. I, I really believe God wants to speak to you uh, today. So today I'm calling it Men Like Trees Walking. Men Like Trees Walking walking so let us re let us pray quickly father in the precious name of jesus we just release your spirit here today we release the holy spirit and we thank you that you're going to do greater things in our lives we're trusting you for greater things uh, touch our eyes so that we might see what you've got for us oh god and i rebuke the spirit of rejection over people's lives in jesus precious name amen hallelujah so lovely to be with you uh, today, um, I want to speak to you about uh, men like trees walking. Now, for anybody that knows the Bible a little bit, they'll know where that comes from, right? It comes from when Jesus was laying his hands on a on a man, and uh, he prayed again. And the guy said the second time, "I see men like trees." So let's let's go there. Mark eight, verse twenty-five. I'm just going to read the verse. You can go check up on the whole. Please go read the whole thing, the whole section. It's a, you get so much more revelation and, uh, you know, but I'm just going to read the verse just for the sake of our time here. Uh, Mark 8.25, it says, Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. So that was after, after he said to Jesus that, um, I see men like trees walking i think maybe i should just read a bit further let me read the whole thing so that uh you know mark 8 22 to 26 and it says they came to bethsaida and some people brought him a blind man and begged him to touch him and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village and when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him he asked him do you see anything he looked up and he said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Uh, and he sent him to his home saying, don't even enter the village. And he said, go wash your face off and so on. So I'm not going to go. I just wanted to touch on that part um, about men like trees walking. You know, when I... When my kids was younger, um, I took them to the optometrist uh, with my wife. All of us went as a family to the optometrist. And, and then the optometrist basically um, explained to them, because they were young, and he, he, he needed to explain to them why, because it came out that both of them um, needed uh, spectacles, um, plus my wife, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't need, but they all of them needed. So... He explained to them that the spectacle's job is to help correct the problems that our eyes develop over time. So your eyes have got problems. And, and so for my one son, he had a, like a dual thing. He, he struggled with, uh, with concentrating on the words. It's, quite, it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable, actually. The way God made us is uh, absolutely remarkable. He... He had a struggle so that the doctor explained that um, he looks at a word 
and instantly he should be seeing what the word is, but he, but his eyes, uh, he's still trying to figure out if that is the word or not. So in any case, uh, I'm not a doctor, and he explained, tried to explain us how important it is to bring, to give, you know, to have spectacles. My other son, he couldn't see, he had to sit closer to the board, he couldn't see on the board properly, and he needed, he needed spectacles as well. But I think the... Because the, the, the spectacles, what it does, it, it gives clarity to the eyes and it takes away the strain and stress from the eyes. You know, uh, so that's what it does. That's what the spectacles does. But I think the most precious moment for me uh, where it really became an eye opener and I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me there was when my one son, he was watching television and he put his spectacles on and he's like, <gasps> you know, See, and he said, Daddy, so this is what it should look like. Because, I mean, and I took them when they were late. I mean, we didn't even realize. I took them when they were eight, maybe, or seven or eight. I can't remember, please forgive me. So, but it was eight or seven. But for eight or seven years, my, my son thought that blurry eyesight was normal eyesight. He thought that was normal. And when he put the spectacles on it, I could, I'll never forget, because he was watching cartoon, and uh, I was there, and I said, I said, this is what, I can see it, this is how clear, uh, what clarity looks like, <laughs> you know, I can better see, you know, and he, he improved in his schooling and everything, because he could see clearer on the board. Now imagine going through life, thinking that blurry eyesight is normal eyesight. Just think about that. Going through life, thinking that blurry eyesight is normal eyesight. Now, I think that affects people a lot, thinking that this is normal. What they seeing, what because re what rejection does, it um, rejection. Because your eyesight, it, how can I put, I, I'm trying to put it in, rejection blinds you. That's the best way I can put it. In. Rejection dims your eyes. So, in, so instead of seeing what God is trying to make you see, it blinds you from uh, from what you need to see. In other words, you're so overwhelmed by what happened to you. You're so overwhelmed by the, your past or overwhelmed that you can't see the wood for the trees. You know, like uh, they say, you, you can't see past the hurt and the pain that you are uh, going through. You can't see that people are, or perceive that people are trying to help you. Your vision is dumb. And it's unclear. You can't even see like Eli uh, in the days of Samuel. Eli was blind. He couldn't see. He couldn't perceive what God was doing. He couldn't see the glory of the Lord. And uh, so it is important that we understand that God wants to help us to see him clearly. One of the issues with people that are not saved, that you, somebody you praying for somebody at home, your husband, your children that are not saved, the one thing you need to pray against is the spirit of blindness. You need to say, Lord, take the spiritual blindness off their eyes so that they might see the goodness of God. They might see what God... I even see it today in society. I mean, some things are so self-explanatory, but... People don't see it. People only see the lies. People see what they want to see. And we need a change. You need to change the way you perceive and the way you see things. And that's very, very important. Uh, because how you see... Now, there's two things here. Number one is, how do you see yourself? 
And how do you perceive, how do you see others? Uh, so those are two important things, but I just want to deal, but let's just, let's just get back to this guy that was, that, um, that Jesus prayed for. Here's a blind guy. Jesus puts spit and mud on his head, which is weird in itself. Um, he puts that on the guy's eyes. And you must understand the, the type of miracle it was. It was an incredible miracle in more ways than one. Because God didn't just give him sight to see, which is already a miracle. Number one is just a miracle to be able to see. But it was an incredible miracle in more ways than one. Because Jesus completely healed his eye sockets. Jesus completely, most probably had damaged nerves. Yeah, that was healed. Uh, he could have had pain in his eyes from birth. And mostly they call it, in the Bible days, the blind did not have it easy. Because if you were blind, you, you were led by other people. Even today, it's not like today it's any better. But imagine those days, they didn't have sticks or, you know, or way of braille or whatever it is. There was, you know, you had to be led by other. You were dependent on other people, and so on. And and today, uh, we could have a diagnosis for it. But in those days, there was no diagnosis for his blind, blind man. Because when I did a bit of research on this, I found they they said that this man could have most probably had um, a, a, a trachoma. You know, uh, according to uh, the experts, trachoma is a painful infection of the eye and is most common cause of blindness today and was probably prevalent in ancient times. Now the Bible does, this, does not tell us why he was blind, but when Jesus healed him, he gave him a fresh lease, lease of life, both physically, mentally and spiritually. So the guy might have had pain all his life. We don't know. Uh, I mean, the Bible doesn't say, but there, there was a a miracle here in his life. Now, now, number one, he's not dependent on other people anymore. God completely changed this man's life um, completely around. But then he prayed for the guy. And the guy couldn't see clearly. He saw men like trees walking. He saw men like trees walking. Now, that's powerful. Now, that is another sermon on its own. I'm going to park that men like trees walking bus because that's not what I want to go into now because I'm telling you, you know, the Bible says that we are like trees planted by the rivers of water. I believe the man saw in the spirit when he, oh, when he, it's not like Jesus made a mistake. He prayed for him in the natural. But firstly, he opened his eyes in the spirit because he's spirit. The man is spirit. And then after that, you know, but that's another, we're, we're going to park that bus then. One day I'll speak about that again. And he, he, he said that. And he saw the man in the spirit. And it's, it says that when we see men as trees walking, we are not seeing, seeing clearly. And the process of God makes things clearer for us the second time. And this is called regeneration. Um. One of the ways we can uh, we can see better is through the read the process of regeneration, repentance. All of those is making us see things clearer. I hope you you get what I'm saying. So I'm saying that this guy was uh, he saw things in one way first, and then God had to pray for him again. So that and some of us, many of us, and I'm just using this like in a prophetic way. Because I just told you that I believe that he's sowing the spirit first. And then, but many of us, you know, we need a touch from God. Yes, we were touched by God when we gave our lives to the Lord. And we're only seeing things uh, like men like trees walking. But we need another touch. And that process of another touch from God, you, you need to get it through repentance. Because repentance is just changing the way you... You perceive things. Changing your mind is literally what the word means. It's the born, being born again. Asking the Holy Spirit to change the way you see things. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you new eyes. 
Because if somebody is in the world, they see things in a certain way. And they can't see it your way. So you're praying for them and you say, can't you see, man? Give your life to the Lord. You're into drugs, you're drinking, you're partying, you're doing all these things that you should be doing. You should be, uh, can't you perceive it? Can't you see that God wants to? And many of them can't see it. They need that touch from God. And uh, we need to pray that God will, uh, there would be repentance and regeneration is just to change the way we see sin. You know, at first the sin was acceptable, but when you are in God, sin becomes unacceptable. It's a different way of looking. It's the process of renewing our mind. It starts with repentance and regeneration. So, uh, so I'm not going to go into uh, in depth of all of that, but that is what we, um, you know, that is what I want to speak. I want to concentrate more on the rejection part of it. How rejection um, sort of determines how we see ourselves. How rejection, uh, in, you know, uh, breaks the way we see ourselves like God, like God sees us. Now, there's another word I want to call here or speak about here. It's called self-perception. In other words, how you see yourself, the idea that you have, that you have, about the kind of person you are. What is the idea of the kind of... How do you see yourself? Um, people's self-perceptions are often very different from the way other people perceive them. How do you perceive yourself? Do you perceive yourself by what God says about your life? Like, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, or I'm the head and not the tail, I'm above only and not beneath, or whatever it is, whatever the scripture... Do you perceive yourself in those terms, or... Uh, so, so there's a lot of questions we need to ask ourselves here. So how do you see yourself? How do I view myself? How do I see others? Uh, am I looking at life with eyes of hurt and rejection? Have I allowed the Lord to come in and renew my mind and my heart? What happened in my life or my childhood that shapes the way I see myself or others? What happened? What happened? Why do you see yourself different? So, you know, like, let's look at, I mean, there's so many scriptures in the Bible. Sometimes you, I just had to break, not give so many because there's so many. Gideon, Jesus, uh, the Lord called Gideon, God called Gideon. And the first thing that Gideon said was, uh, I'm from the smallest of the, it's not like God was, there, it, there wasn't a, he didn't ask him how much money do you have? You know, but that was the self-perception that he's from the smallest. He is not, you know, he's not good enough. He's not, and so the same with Moses. And so we can go on um, about examples in the Bible that he didn't see him, but God saw him as a mighty man of valor. He didn't see himself that way, but he saw himself as a mighty man of valor. <coughs> Excuse me. So. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the examples. Another great example is what I spoke about earlier as well, uh, last time. Saul had a grandson called Mephibosheth. The boy lost the function of his legs while, in the t during a war, there was a war going on and his nanny dropped him. And her, he hurt his legs, dropped him a couple of stories and he hurt his legs and he couldn't walk. And then one day, David wanted to bless Mephibosheth. He was looking for members of the house of Saul. Because he realized that he never uh, blessed the house of Saul. And uh, uh, and David blessed him. And so they found Mephibosheth. And David blessed him and made him eat at the king's table for the rest of his life. So there he was at the king's table. He ate at the king's table for the rest of his life. Mephibosheth. And... Uh, David wanted to bless him, but this is what he said. He said uh, in Second Samuel nine seven to nine. Second Samuel nine seven to nine. Um, so David said, "Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan's sake, your father's sake. I will restore you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually." 
And this, this is what Mephibosheth thought of the whole thing. He said, when Mephibosheth heard this, he uttered words that explained how he saw himself. Second Samuel 9 verse 8. It says, then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? Mephibosheth saw himself as a dead dog. Somebody useless that has no value. He could not believe that he was valuable enough to sit at the king's table forever. How many of us can't receive blessings? How many, how many times... I've been with people that can't receive a blessing. You say, I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee. Can't receive it. I want to just give you a hundred bucks. He doesn't want to receive it. It's just a low self-esteem. It's Sometimes it's pride, thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to. But that is what a spirit of rejection does. A spirit of rejection is a negative catalyst that causes people to have a distorted view of themselves. It's like they put on spectacles that says abandonment, pain, rejection, and hurt. And they look at life through those lenses. This negatively shapes their lives. And in turn, it destroys the relationships around them. It destroys the relationships around them. Because that's all they see. They see the hurt, the pain. They deal with you through eyes of hurt and pain. But that's what rejection does. Um, I'll never forget, once I saw, um, um, I saw an, an ad. It was an advert. It was something, I, I went on the internet and saw a Dove ad. You remember Dove, Dove Soap? It was in 2013, so it was quite a long time ago. And uh, they, I was moved by it because it, it, it illustrated what I saw. So they, just to explain, I'm going to read it because, just to explain it to you. The woman, they had a small group of women, right? And then they asked this woman to describe what they looked like to a forensic artist. So you know the guy that sketches people, right? So so if it was me, the, the guy would say, Fred, I, I needed to explain to an artist what I look like. And what he does, he doesn't see me. They could not see him because he was hidden from them. So the guy is behind somewhere, they can't see. They must just speak to a voice and they say, you must describe what you look like. He says, okay, I've got big ears, I've got flat nose, I've got this and I've got that, I've got pimples in my face, I've got wide eyes, I've got da 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 You say all of the, you tell them, the guy asks you questions, and then he had to draw them purely based on their verbal description of themselves. So he doesn't see them and he draws them. So the artist and the woman never get to see each other. So they don't, they don't know what they look like. So, so the plot was, um, the twist in the plot was that earlier that day, each woman was asked to socialize with another stranger. This stranger was then asked to describe the woman they just met. The forensic artist then sketches the same woman based on the description of the stranger. So they were, I thought it was a cool, a cool experiment. So, <clears throat> so yeah, they in the in the in the morning they're mingling with other people. They're mingling with one particular person, and then the artist asks that person what that person looks like, and he describes. So you have two views of. Who you look like. You either look like the way I see myself and the way that a friend or somebody else sees me. And then the result of the experiment is that the woman are shown two drawings. One based on their own description and the other based on the stranger's description. The woman then realizes that the drawings based on the stranger's description depict much more beautiful women. But their description are not so beautiful. In the end, the video says, you are more beautiful than you think. So the experiment brought about results that say a lot of about how we as human beings view ourselves. So what rejection does? 
rejection gives you a negative view of yourself because you see others through the hurt and the vision in them. So, so a low self-esteem is when you have a strong feeling that you are not valuable enough. Right? This lack of value will in turn determine the way you see yourself and how you view others in your life. There's a saying that says, hurt people, hurt people. And so, um, so we call it introspection. Introspection is how you look at yourself. Extro, extrospection. Uh, extrospection, yeah. Is looking outside uh, observable behavior. So in other words, we judge other people based on what we see, but we judge ourselves based on what we think and feel. Have you guys got that? So we judge other people based on what we see, but we judge ourselves based on what we think and feel about ourselves. So the blind man needed another touch from God to be able to see clearly. I want to ask you today the question. He needed clarity in his life. He needed a fresh vision. Do you need a fresh vision? Do you need spectacles, different spectacles? Not the spectacles of hurt and pain. <coughs> Sorry. Not the spectacles of hurt and, hurt and pain, but the the spectacles of Christ. Do you need God to come and do a work in your heart? And your future lies in Christ. It's the way, it's very important. When you break the spirit of rejection over your life, immediately it changes the way you see yourself. And just like that blind man, maybe you need a fresh touch from God. And today, I want to just pray for you. Maybe you were there and you thought that blurry eyesight, the way you see things is real, is how it's supposed to be. But you actually need God's spectacles. In actual fact, maybe not even spectacles, but you need God to come and touch your eyes so that you can see the blessing. You, maybe you will see your family in a different way. You'll see it will change the way you deal with situations at work. You, you know, uh, have you ever wondered why it's so difficult for people to work with you? Why are you always in fights at work? Why are you always in disputes? Why you and your husband can't see eye to eye? Because you're not seeing, you know, don't you need a fresh touch from God? So let me just pray, Father, I just pray today for a fresh touch from you. We need a touch from you, O oh God. In Jesus' precious name, I pray that you touch the eyes of every single person that is watching this, uh, this broadcast today. I also come against the spirit of rejection. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Leave the people's eyes. Leave their perceptions. Leave their mind. I, I speak the blessing of God over them right now in Jesus precious name I pray that you touch break number one I pray for to break the spiritual blindness off of our eyes I release the anointing of God to touch you today so that you will see yourself better than you perceive who you are that God will touch your mind touch your heart give you a a, a, re, a re, rejuvenation give you a regeneration of who you are in Jesus precious name I pray for a freshness, fresh touch some of us are just old and stale in the way we see things and the old is just but Lord says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all the old things have gone away behold he makes all things new and so I pray that your eyes will be checked by the Holy Spirit and that you will surrender your life afresh and renewed in Jesus' precious name. And you know what? The strain and the pain on your eyes, I pray that the spectacles of God will come and take the strain and the pain in your eyes, the pressure on your eyes. 
in Jesus' precious name. And as that happens, may it touch your eyes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, I really felt an anointing there. I just pray the blessing of God over you. That uh, And we break that spirit of rejection that's trying to hold of you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in people's lives. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll see each other again at some other time. God bless you.